Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Arcadia Valley in Crawford County in Kansas, many people reported seeing a wild man or a gorilla in the bottomlands of the Osage River. It was called Old Chef by the locals and was seen by over 60 people. Old Chef had a stooping gait, very long arms, and immense hands, and was covered in hair. It walked on its hind legs, but occasionally ran on all fours. As for hairy men of unknown type, these were reported from lots of places over the years. On to the next one. Sunday, August 15th, 1869. Correspondent of the St. Louis Democrat by M.S. Trimble. Journal Free Press, Osage City, Kansas. We of the Arcadia Valley in the southwestern part of Crawford County are having a new sensation, which may lead to some new disclosures in nature history, if investigated as it should be. It is nothing less than the discovery of a wild man or gorilla, or what is it? It has, at different times, been seen by almost every inhabitant of the valley, and it occasionally has been seen in the adjoining counties of Missouri, but it seems to make its home in this vicinity. Several times it has approached the cabins of settlers, much to the terror of women and children, especially if the men happened to be absent working in the field. In one instant, it approached the house of one of our old citizens, but was driven away with clubs by one of the men. It has so near a resemblance to the human form that the men are unwilling to shoot it. It is difficult to give a description of this wild man or animal. It has a stooping gait, very long arms, with immense hands or claws, generally walks on its hind legs, but sometimes on all four. The beast, or what it is, is as cowardly as it is ugly, and it is next to impossible to get near enough to obtain a good view of it. The settlers, not knowing what to call it, have christened it Old Chef. Since its appearance, our fences are often found down, allowing the stock free range on our corn. I suppose Old Chef is only following his inclination, as it may be easier for him to pull them down than to climb over. However, as it is, curses loud and deep are heaped upon its head by the settlers. The settlers are divided in opinion as to whether it belongs to the human family or not. Probably it will be found to be a gorilla or large orangutan that has escaped from some menagerie in the settlement east of here. At one time, over 60 of the citizens turned out to hunt it down, but it escaped. But probably owing to the fright it received, it kept out of sight for several days. And just as the settlers were congratulating themselves that they were rid of an intolerable nuisance, old chef came back seemingly as savage as ever. If this meets the eye of any showman who has lost one of his collection of beasts, he may know where to find it. At present, it is a terror of all women and children in the valley. It cannot be caught, and nobody is willing to shoot it. On to the next one. At Delia in Jackson County in Kansas, 20 miles northwest of Topeka, a bread truck driver saw a five-foot-tall gorilla-type creature that was extremely hairy and walking upright. That same night, something killed 16 young hogs in the area by biting them vampire-style in the neck. On to the next one. This was in Coffee County in Kansas. My husband and two sons and I lived in Emporia. Through our church, my husband had become involved with the scout program. They were having a weekend campout 
and a ward ceremony maybe 50 plus miles east of Emporia. He called at about 10 p.m. He had forgotten the award and asked me to bring them to him. I left at about 10.40 and went east out of Emporia on, I think, Highway US-50. Shortly after passing what was called Beto Junction, I turned south and curved around to the east as it was supposed to be the shortest route. The road had no shoulders and was filled with potholes forcing me to go at a very slow rate of speed, no more than 30 miles per hour, and slowing further than 30 at times. I had gone only a few miles when I saw movement to my right side about 50 feet ahead. Thinking it was a deer, I slowed to almost a crawl, partly due to the road condition as well. What I saw was not a deer, but something walking quickly in an upright position to the fence. The creature just lifted the right leg it was facing me and stepped over the barbed wire, took a couple of steps, and was on the road. I came to a complete stop, being only 20 feet away from this creature. It stood in the middle of the road with my light on it. It looked at the car and I looked at it. I opened my door and stepped out, keeping the door in front of me, and we looked at one another for what seemed like a full minute. Visually, the creature was maybe seven feet, hair covering the body, not being short, like fur, but generally two to three inches on most of the body. There was hair covering on the chest area, but much more sparse. It seemed to be uniformly proportionate, with the arms being the only exception that was minor. One other thing visually, the eyes appeared to be red, and almost glowed red on their own, and not as reflected might produce. I remember an odor, musky, wild, that describes it, but nothing I had smelled before. The other thing that struck me was a feeling of calm and not fear. I distinctly remembered I should have felt threatened, but there was no feeling of being in any danger, just as though we were both curious. The creature began to move, and I got into my car as he continued across the road with just a couple of steps went down into a narrow ditch and then stepped up and over the fence on the north side so easily. It continued for a few steps, stopped and looked at me again and then strode with a long stride towards the trees. I sat there for a couple of minutes and did not see this creature again. I had my two preschool sons with me asleep in the back seat. The time was approximately midnight. The weather was chilly and the night was clear with baby half a quarter moon. There was a pasture or field on both sides of the road with groves of trees or thick hedge growth approximately 75 to 100 yards behind on both sides of the road. On to the next one. My son and his friend found large tracks in fresh snow south of Galesburg, Kansas. They followed these tracks for about half a mile until they stopped under an old railroad trestle. Sometime later, they were checking limb lines about 12.30 a.m. in their boat. In the same area, the night was very dark, and although they had a flashlight, all it would reveal was the immediate brush along the creek. As they paddled along, they kept hearing something in the brush, which they assumed was a deer. A few minutes later, a huge rock came flying downward in front of their boat and hit the water. Whatever it was had to be either human or a human type of creature. It is unlikely to have been a person since that side of the creek is avoided because of its inaccessibility and very heavy brush. Just north of the incident, tracks were found the previous winter. The two witnesses were my son and his friend. They were paddling a rowboat to check limb line. It was approximately 2.30 a.m. Chilly, but not cold. The area is brushy wood along a muddy creek. Important, the west side of the creek is inaccessible by car, but by parking the car along the road, one can walk southwest into the wood. On to the next one. In the area of Big Ditch in Wichita in 
Sedgwick County in Kansas. I had spent Saturday night at a friend's house and awoke at 6 a.m. Sunday morning. I decided to go hunting, so I asked my friend if he wanted to go. He said he did not. So, I went to an area I knew. I was hunting rabbits along the dike on the east side of the Wichita Valley Center Flood Control Project. This is an area that my friend and I had hunted at several times. This morning, I was not having any luck. I noticed that there were several doves flying down to the course of the water flowing through the center of the ditch. I decided to try my luck at some doves. I concealed myself in some tall bushes along the side of the water on the east side. After about 15 minutes, I started hearing water splashing to the south of me. I leaned out to see the source. There I saw approximately a quarter of a mile downstream a creature. At first, I thought it to be a dog getting a drink of water as it was standing in the middle of the stream, but I soon realized that it was splashing the water with one of its front limbs. It suddenly rose to its hind legs and seemed to be looking around and smelling the air, even at this distance, and the foggy conditions I could make out its general appearance, five foot seven to six feet tall and covered with short black hair or fur. Its coat was tight to its body. The head appeared to be egg-shaped. The ears were close to the head. The body was fit and proportional all over. It appeared to be humanoid. After a few minutes, it resumed its flashing by bending at the waist and swiping with its right limb. I wanted a closer look, so I checked the wind and found I was downwind. I worked my way further north in the hope I would not alert it. I crossed the stream and worked back along the top of the cliff overlooking the water. But by the time I got to the section above where it had been, it was gone. It was around 7 a.m. The area is grassy, layered ground, dike on the east side and west side, a flat area from the dike to the course. The course is 50 yards wide, and the lower part of the big ditch where the water runs through. The ditch was built to handle the floodwaters of the Arkansas River at the time of the incident. There were few houses within the mile. On to the next one. The year was 1956 when I sighted what I now know to be a Bigfoot. I was 15 years old at the time, and my father and grandfather were in their 40s and 60s, respectively. Both my dad and my grandpa were framing carpenters, and their business was booming. In fact, on the weekends, they would take me to job sites to do cleanup, which enabled me to always have some folding money in my pocket. I should tell you that both of these men were in excellent condition physically. They were constantly carrying lumber and going up and down ladders, and at this time, nails were delivered to the job site in 100-pound wooden kegs, which the men would carry by hand. I didn't give it much thought at the time, but when I would attempt to do some of the things that they did regularly, I, at 15, was unable to do so. They were strong and durable men. Both my father and grandfather were hunters, and a couple of times a year, they would head to a variety of locations to bag their next trophy. And so, it was that, in early fall of 1965, we packed up the truck and headed over to Buffalo, Wyoming for some antelope hunting. At that time, according to Grandpa, Buffalo was touted as being the best place in the country for deer, elk, and antelope. As funny as this may seem, with all of my talking about hunting, our sighting actually had nothing to do with hunting at all, and I will get to that. So, we had traveled out into the region and eventually hooked up with Highway 16. Now, this highway actually runs through Buffalo and into what are known as the Bighorn Mountains. It then passes through Cody, and if you continue on, you will end up in Yellowstone. We were heading out for 10 days, which would include some sightseeing fishing, and the hunt. This region of Wyoming has a lot of history attached to it, 
that's why it's worth mentioning. There's something to be said about standing in the place where historic events have occurred, just as there is something to be said about reliving where you saw Bigfoot. At that time, the town of Buffalo couldn't have had more than a couple of thousand residents, but I do remember it being a very accommodating and hospitable place to stay. During the first couple of days, we had headed south to check out some historic sites. It wasn't like we were going to see some mountains or anything like that. Rather, we were going to several locations where events had occurred. Having spent a couple of days boning up on some American history, we headed back to Buffalo and began to do some fishing. This place is the home of some 600 miles of clear mountain streams. There are numerous gorgeous mountain lakes and, in particular, Lake Desmet, which was touted as being the home of the rainbow trout. We had set up a tent on the edge of Clear Creek, which ran through the center of town. We spent a day and a night there catching some beautiful trout and enjoying the surrounding. The following day, my dad and grandfather had hired a guide to take us out for some antelope. Now, there were available pack horses and outfitters that you could take up into the high country, as they called it. However, our guide was bringing us in his jeep into some wild areas where the antelope could be found. Really, the way it worked was quite simple and less time-consuming than horseback. We were riding in his jeep and stopped from time to time to scope out the surrounding terrain, with binoculars in the hopes of finding our prey. Once an antelope was seen, the guide would determine if the pursuit would continue on foot, in the jeep, or both. At the end of what was two days, we had each bagged one. The following day, we traveled over to High Mountain Lake, which was located in the Big Horn. This lake was like a big bowl, sitting in the middle of some rocky and rough terrain. It was filled with beautiful crystal clear azure blue water. Surrounding the lake were stands of pointy tall spruce trees. They were clustered together here and there. We set up our tent on a wide and flat area on one end of the lake. As a matter of fact, there were actually several other people and tents set up there when we arrived, so we weren't alone in the location. You could walk around the entire lake and fish from the water's edge. The three of us were getting into some really nice rock baths, perch, and rainbows. At the end of the day, we hiked up to an elevated position behind where our tent was set up and sat on an outcropping of rock. From this position, we were maybe a hundred feet above our camp, looking over the lake at another larger outcropping, perhaps several hundred feet. This outcropping was protruding out of a sloping hillside, which had several large patches of spruce trees interspersed within it. It was late in the day, and as we were looking everywhere, we embraced the moment and the beauty of this place. A large figure appeared from behind one of the stands of spruce. Now, the spruce trees were growing sporadically up the lower side of this outcropping, and because of their height and the fact that they were growing up the slope, they were blocking and or consuming our view of a good portion of this rocky area. Whatever this figure was had walked behind the stand for a considerable distance before we actually saw it. As you could imagine, we were all pointing at and talking about what we were now seeing. It was large and black and was clearly walking on two legs. As we focused our eyes and attention on it, we then noticed that it had something draped over its shoulder. My grandpa said, it's carrying a damn deer. It could have kept walking along the steep rocky slope toward the other end of the lake, but it didn't. It started to walk up the steepest part of this outcropping, which was quite jagged and very steep terrain. In fact, at several points, it was scaling some vertical rock walls, facing using one arm and its legs while hanging onto this animal draped over its back and shoulder. We watched this beast navigate its way up and then through the several hundred foot tall areas of loose rock and steep walls for maybe five minutes before it disappeared over the top. I don't have to tell you how we felt or what we were talking about for the evening.
The following day, we walked around the lake and into the area where we had been watching it the day before. As we were now standing where it had been, the dimensions of everything that we had been looking at had suddenly become exponentially larger. The loose rocks that it had been casually walking across were one and two foot boulders flowing like sand down the face of the hillside. We could barely walk on them for fear of breaking an ankle. The jagged rock walls it had navigated with ease while carrying a deer were very formidable indeed. I was now standing facing a wall that I had seen it standing against as it began to climb. From the other side of the lake, I thought this was maybe 10 or 15 feet tall, but now as I was standing in front of it, it was almost 30 feet tall. The beast had appeared to be almost half the wall's height when looking at it the previous day. And by the way, when this thing had been climbing the rock faces, it had been using one hand and both feet, just like my dad and grandpa would carry lumber up a ladder. Grandpa has long since passed away, but at the time, we didn't know what we were looking at. It was only years later when the term Bigfoot had begun to circulate in the state that we realized we had seen one that day in Buffalo, Wyoming. It may not be the most intense and exhilarating experience that I have ever had in my lifetime, and I had to reach out to you and share it with you. I hope you enjoyed those encounters, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!